It's 2017, I'm in a brand new studio, and I've got this thing behind me. I haven't been able to talk about this very special PC build for a couple of months. That is until today. Inside here, we have a brand new Intel 7th generation KB Lake i7 processor and a Z270 motherboard. But this is no ordinary review. I'm going head to head with another YouTuber, Marcus from PC Centric. So basically what we've done is Asus, Cooler Master and Crucial have given us both the exact same components and we set out to build the best looking and fastest gaming rigs we possibly could. But the best news is if you subscribe to both of our channels and then you click on the link in the description below to vote on which you thought was the best video, you could be in, a, in for a chance to win a GTX 1060 graphics card, a brand new one courtesy of ASUS. So here is my build. This is what I've come up with. Inside this beautiful Cooler Master Masterbox 5T case is the all new and seriously fast KB Lake i7 7700K processor. But it's not just the processor that's new here. The ASUS Z270F Strix motherboard is a second generation 1151 socket board and the new version of ASUS's Pro Gaming line. We've also got an ASUS GeForce GTX 1060 ROG Strix OC graphics card, 16 gigabytes of Crucial Ballistics DDR4 RAM, a Cooler Master Master Liquid Pro 240 water cooler keeping everything nice and cool, as well as a Cooler Master Vanguard V750 power supply, and a Crucial MX300 275 gigabyte SSD for storage. Some of the prices haven't been confirmed yet, but all in you're looking at around £1,300 or $1,450 for their spec. So a big thanks to ASUS, Cooler Master and Crucial for providing me with all the components I need for this build. But do rest assured this isn't an advert, they're not paying me to say anything, all my opinions and thoughts are my own. So don't worry, they were just kind enough to provide me with some samples. But the big question, is KB Lake really worth getting excited about? Well, the architecture isn't that much different from Skylake underneath, and Intel's desktop processors generally haven't been that revolutionary since Sandy Bridge five years ago. Laptops and Ultrabooks have benefited from the faster integrated graphics chips and improved power efficiencies, but for desktops we've only seen really iterative and small updates, nothing really earth shattering. And unfortunately that is still the case with KB Lake. There's a clock speed boost, 4K video decoding improvements, and a minor reworking of the 14 nanometer architecture, but nothing mind blowing. To be fair though, Intel haven't had much competition from AMD, although their upcoming Zen chips do look quite good. So the main difference between Skylake and KB Lake is a higher base and boost clock speed. Compared to the Skylake i7 6700K, which has a 4 GHz base and 4.2 GHz boost, this new 7700K runs at 4.2 and 4.5 GHz respectively. But then again, you wouldn't be buying the K or unlocked version of the chip unless you plan to overclock it, and that's where things get interesting. Now, I'm not a hardcore overclocker, and I prefer a good old fashioned, no fuss, stable motherboard auto overclock. So rather than messing with CPU multipliers or adjusting voltages myself, I used ASUS's AI tuning wizard in the Z270's BIOS to get a stable 15% overclock to 4.84 GHz, which is awesome, and nearly 250 MHz more than I got for my Skylake i7. So a stable 4.84 GHz overclock on this chip, which took just a couple of minutes, is absolutely incredible, but it gets better. Now, this motherboard isn't actually out yet, and ASUS keeps sending me updated beta drivers for it, and as well as a brand new update which came just today, there was a whole new uh, overclock profile for 5 GHz which you can load. There's no modifying voltages or CPU stuff, it's just load it, restart it, save it, and you're good to go. Unfortunately, when I tried this 5 GHz overclock, I did get a blue screen of death pretty much instantly, but ASUS are clearly confident this can work. So depending on your system, your cooling, and maybe with a little bit of tinkering of voltages or some of the stuff in the BIOS, it's clearly achievable. But whether you're getting 4.84 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz on this KB Lake chip, these are some seriously impressive numbers. And that's really the main benefit of KB Lake. So what sort of performance do you actually get with the i7-7700K in real life? Well, I ran five different tests with the processor at stock speeds and overclocked to 4.84 gigahertz. As well as that, I also had the 1060 graphics card overclocked by around 8% on average because it is also important to overclock your GPU as well as your CPU to make sure you get the best gains. So here are the results. We've got the Time Spy and Cinebench benchmarks as well as Gears of War 4, Rise of the Tomb Raider and GTA 5. Now what's interesting is the CPU overclock had almost no effect in two of the three games. 
only GTA 5 saw a 4% boost from that extra 240 MHz processor speed, but the artificial benchmarks did show a 5% boost in CPU scores. So considering how easy it is to overclock, getting an extra 4-5% to in some applications is definitely worth doing, and you'd be looking at more like 6-7% gains if you do push it to 5 GHz. Obviously your PC is only as fast as its slowest component, so if you are going to go out and buy a new KB Lake chip, make sure you pair it with a fast GPU and give it a bit of an overclock. Now if you are a serious PC gamer and a confident overclocker, there's no doubt you could push these components even further than me, but I'm still really impressed I was able to get a stable overclock of over 4.8 GHz on the new KB Lake i7 in just a few seconds using the BIOS auto overclocker, or if you prefer you can use ASUS's new AI Suite 3 software which incorporates the new DIP5 software which makes overclocking really easy. So not only is it easy to achieve a good stable overclock, but also temperatures are good. Using a Cooler Master Master Liquid Pro 240 in this, under load I wasn't exceeding 78 degrees and at idle it was around 36 degrees, so it's fast and cool which is great to see. So for around £330 or $350, this i7-7700K is a great chip and capable of reaching some incredible speeds, but it's definitely not worth it if you already own a Skylake chip. Despite the higher speeds, you just won't see that much real-world performance difference, around 5-7% on average in my experience. So if you're running a chip from the last couple of years, it's really not worth upgrading. What I'd say is wait for Canon Lake, which is coming in around 6 months toward mid to late 2017, which is coming with a whole new architecture, so that should be quite a big deal. So the i7-7700K isn't going to blow your mind in a desktop PC, but it's still the best enthusiast quad-core you can buy as of early 2017. But what about the new fancy Z270 motherboard I've also got running in this PC? Well, like KB Lake, this second generation 1151 socket motherboard, which means it supports Skylake and KB Lake chips, is a refinement rather than a revolution. Some of the key specs of the Z270F include the new ASUS Extreme Engine Digi Plus technology that improves processor stability and overclocking. On the board itself, you get three PCIe 3.0 slots, two M2 slots, four DDR4 DIMM slots for up to 64 gigabytes of 3866 MHz memory, and for storage, six SATA 3 ports. As for I.O., you get two USB 3.1 ports, one of which is Type-A and the other Type-C, four USB 3, a gigabit LAN port, HDMI 1.4, DisplayPort 1.2, PS2 port, a couple more USB 3s would have been nice, but it is great to see that USB Type-C port because it makes this motherboard much more future-proof. It's a great looking motherboard too, with a premium black and silver colour scheme, but what really stands out is the new Aura RGB technology. Of course, whether you think RGB lighting in PCs is awesome or just a bit of a gimmick is down to you, but I must admit it is quite cool being able to completely sync up your graphics card, RGB lighting strips and motherboard to the same colour scheme or lighting pattern. And all this lighting is done for the new Aura Sync program, which is very straightforward to use and gives you a ridiculous amount of lighting options. And now there's even less reason to have a dedicated sound card, which comes with the new Supreme FX S1220A codec, dual op amps, and premium audiophile grade capacitors built in. Pair that with the new Sonic Studio software and you get some great audio from this motherboard. So prices haven't been confirmed yet, but some leaks have suggested that this new Z270F Strix board, which is the new name for their pro gaming boards, with the built-in lighting will retail for around £175 or $200. So it's about 30 more than the Z170 boards currently, but like the KB Lake chips, it's definitely not worth it if you already have a Z170, but if you're looking to build a new PC or uh, looking to get a Skylake or KB Lake chip and you want a L1151 socket motherboard, there's no reason not to go and just pay that little bit more to get these new boards. They are very, very good. So this has been my review and build using the new i7-7700K and Z270 motherboard. But as I said at the beginning, Marcus from PC Centric has done the exact same build using the same components, and I've no doubt given his channel name, PC Centric, uh, has been able to overclock the chip even further. So head on over to his channel, have a watch of his video, see how far he got, because I haven't seen it yet, I don't know how well he's done, he's all kept it very hush-hush. And the best thing is, as I say, if you do vote for uh, your favourite video by following the link in the description below, and you do subscribe to both our channels, you could win a brand new ASUS GeForce GTX 1060 graphics card, which will be crazy awesome. So thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you make of the new KB Lake chips and the Z270 motherboards in the comments below. Please do like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.